started. Morning guys, I'm Dave Canterbury at the Pathfinder School and what we're going to discuss today is we're going to continue with our map reading and navigational series and we're going to talk about orientating our map so that the map is sitting as the terrain lies in front of us. We are also going to discuss adjusting our compass for grid to magnetic angle so that if we're taking bearings off of our map which is set up in grid north that our compass matches that grid north and we'll discuss that here on the board real quick and then we'll go into it on the ground. Stay with me. Okay guys so if we look at the declination diagram of our map and I'll show you that on the map in a minute it's basically going to look like this or something similar to this depending on where you're at in the United States or in the world and this would be grid north this would be magnetic north and you'll have an arrow pointing to true north so those are the three different types of north that are that you're going to use during navigation magnetic north grid north and true north simple explanation of that is magnetic north is the north that your compass points to which is not exactly the north pole it's just a little offset from the north pole and that is the magnetic pole of the earth at the top. True north is a direct line, direct distance from you to the axis pole on the north pole. Grid north is north on your map and all maps are set up so that the top of the map generally faces north and that's called grid north. The top of the map is grid north but it may not be pointing exactly magnetic north or true north and there will be a degree differential that will be listed in here. Sometimes it's listed in between Sometimes it's just off to the side, and I'll show you that on the map here in a minute, because it is like 6 degrees here in Ohio and 1 degree off of True North, if I remember correctly, and that's an old map. So that could be 7 now, it could be 8, it could be 5, it could be 10. But you're going to have to pay attention to how old your map is when you're looking at this too, because the grid to magnetic angle does change over time. Okay, so a quick explanation of what I just said, guys. If this is the North Pole... And this is true north. Magnetic north may be a little bit different than that. It may be right here. Depending on where I'm standing in relation to this is going to be how far off my needle is going to point between grid north, which is going to be at the top of my map, my map set up in grid squares, like this, Grid north is going to be right here at the top. So depending on where I'm at on this map, my compass will not point to grid north. It'll be pointing to magnetic north. So if my compass is here, my needle's going to point here. True north would be here. This differential angle here is what we have to correct to make our compass match our map. That's kind of the hillbilly math on that and it's about as simple as I can explain it. Okay, so if we look at the declination diagram of our map, it's showing that differential angle that we discussed and it's saying that it's six degrees difference in a westerly declination. So magnetic north is actually six degrees west of grid north on this map and true north is actually one degree east. So that's pretty easy to understand. If you look, think about this with the diagram that we talked about just a minute ago on the board, that gives you the pretty simple explanation. Okay, to match our compass to our map, all we need to do is turn our dial from 360 degrees or north at the top to the angle that the magnetic differential is. And we need to turn it the same direction. If we have a westerly declination, then we're going to turn our compass counterclockwise 6 degrees. So each one of the hash marks on this compass is 2 degrees, so if I go 3 hash marks over, that gives me 6 degrees. Now my compass is matching my map. Because you've got that angle differential right there, you can see that north arrow is there. Okay, So the top of this compass matches grid north now because it's laying right on the grid line and that angle, that six degree angle of magnetic north has now been taken up by my compass right here where I've moved my compass. Pretty simple. If I had westerly declination I'd go the opposite, or easterly declination I'd go the opposite direction. But you can see what we've created now is we've created the same angle that we have on the map and that's what we're looking for. 
Okay, so now if I lay my map on a flat surface outside, not on the hood of my car, not on a 55 gallon drum, not on my ATV, not on anything that's metal that's going to affect my needle. I can lay it on the ground out here and I can orientate the map to the compass now, or orientate the map, excuse me, to the terrain in front of me by laying my compass on the map, just like this, laying it on a grid line in the corner, laying it flat, and now if I rotate my map until the needle's in the doghouse, now my map is orientated to the terrain in front of me. And I can take bearings off this map no problem. I can view the terrain in front of me. Remember that a map is nothing more than a two-dimensional drawing of three-dimensional objects on the ground. Okay, so while we're down here at the declination diagram, let's look right below that real quick. And that gives us the scale of our map. And this map says the scale is 1 to 10,000. What that means is that one inch on this map equals 10,000 inches on the ground. And below that, you'll see two scales. One of them is in feet, one of them is in meters. I actually prefer to work in meters. I'm not sure why the U.S. never adopted the metric system. It all works in tens, and for people with dyslexia like me, it just makes it simple. Now I can take my compass, and I can use it for a measuring device to measure distances on the ground. And if I lay my centimeter scale on the meter line, it tells me that three centimeters is equal to 300 meters. So that means for every centimeter on my ruler here, on my side of my compass, that's 100 meters. That's important because now I have the ability, once I have orientated my map and I've got my compass matching my map and all of that good stuff, I can now not only get a bearing on, of travel, I can also get a distance. And that's going to become important when we talk about pacing beads. So let's just take an example real quick of what I'm talking about and look at this map somewhere we've already are fairly familiar with because we've looked at it in other videos. And we'll talk about this area on the map that we were traveling in, which is in this area here. So if we take, if we are planning to travel from this hilltop to the wetland area, we can take our centimeter scale and lay it from the hilltop, from the center of the hilltop, over to the center between the two wetland areas and it says that it is seven centimeters okay that tells me it's 700 meters now if I know what my pace count is I know exactly how far to walk on what bearing to get exactly where I want to go and that's called dead reckoning and we'll talk about that in another video but I wanted to talk about that part of the legend on the map because it's right below your declination diagram okay guys well I appreciate you joining for another video out here real quick I hope I didn't confuse anybody too much you're welcome to ask me questions if you did get confused on any of that. We'll be continuing with this navigation series as soon as we can. I'm Dave Canterbury at the Pathfinder School. I thank you for your support, for your views, for your comments, for everything that you do for me, for my school, for my family, my friends, affiliates, and sponsors. I'll be back with another video as soon as I can. Thanks, guys.